guys, hope you're doing well and welcome back. So I'm curious, have you ever received a report from your insurance following the delivery of prosthesis and be utterly confused by all the L codes, gibberish descriptions, and large dollar amounts at the end? In this video, we are continuing our conversation on the cost of prosthetics and why that number seems to be so high when the cost of the actual parts and pieces are less and how that relates to me getting paid as a prosthetic provider. If you haven't seen part one, I suggest you watch that first. I'll link it up above and put it in the description below. In that video, we break down the different parts and pieces of an above knee prosthesis and the reimbursement associated with those characteristics. So check that out if you're interested and then come join us back here for the deeper dive. So we saw in the previous video that when a prosthesis is built to insurance, there is a list of L codes that describe the device being provided and each each code has an associated dollar amount. But how are those dollar amounts even determined? Now, fair warning, we will be spending a quick few minutes on history of insurance. So I did add timestamps to this video. Just go ahead and skip on ahead. But if you want to stick around, I will try and make this as simple and painless as possible. Here we go. The Center of Medicaid and Medicare Services is responsible for receiving and reviewing applications for HCPCS codes, which include prosthetics for approval. Now, very few of these requests are granted. Most of the time when changes are made, it's been generalizing the L codes, especially when it comes to prosthetic feet, which makes it really difficult for us to be able to differentiate between the different characteristics of different prosthetic feet. They try to say a foot is a foot is a foot, which is not the case. It's the same thing as trying to say a car is a car is a car. A Ford Taurus does not compare the same to a Ferrari. They do update the codes and the prices associated with those codes throughout the years. And that is based on, you know, several different factors, including provider input, manufacturer input, public input, overhead required to provide those services and devices and fit them appropriately, along with the geographical location of where those services are being provided. But how did the system even get established in the first place? So prior to 1960, you would have hundreds of different practitioners giving hundreds of different descriptions for the exact same service. You can imagine that might be a little confusing. So in 1966, the American Medical Association published the CPT, Current Procedural Terminology. By this time, the government had been playing a fairly significant role in helping pay medical expenses. And the federal agency we now know as CMS, the Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services, created the HCFA, a lot of acronyms, Common Procedural Coding System, whose responsibility was controlling costs for taxpayers, and they created a set separate but similar similar to the previous, the CPT. You still have the problem about 120 different coding systems within that system, causing variations in guidelines and claims. In 1983, these two merged and have collaborated to develop the new code set HCPCS, Healthcare Common Procedural Coding System, which includes prosthetic devices and services. Now, if you're interested, you can go to cms.gov and download the current fee schedule. need to scroll down, but along the leftmost column, prosthetic codes will be L5000 through L9900. There are ceiling and floor columns, which define the upper and lower limits of the fee schedule, and there are different columns for each state, R referring to rural and NR referring to non-rural. I will also put the link in the description below if you're interested. We as practitioners are not determining what we bill. It's a set fee schedule. And most other insurance, like private insurance, are gonna follow along with the Medicare guidelines and their fee schedule. Now, even though codes associated with prosthetics are pre-approved and have a set fee schedule, it is ultimately the practitioner's responsibility to make sure that they are billing correctly, that they are coding correctly, 
and billing accurately and that they are delivering exactly what they say they are. Now, most in our field are honest, caring people that are going to do the very best to make sure that they are doing things correctly and ethically. But just keep in mind, like in any field, you're going to get those people that make unethical decisions when it comes to billing. So when you sign off for that delivery, make sure that you're getting everything that is listed on that delivery receipt and that you are happy and satisfied with the quality and fit of the device that you're receiving. So looking at our example from the previous video, all those individual parts and pieces are less than that $22,000. What does all that actually cover and pay for? So I actually get paid per device, not for my time. What does that mean? For the above knee prosthesis we've been referencing, I had several consultation appointments with her while she was healing, followed by a casting appointment, followed by a check socket fitting appointment before we ever got to her delivery appointment. We have also had several follow-up appointments since delivery. Now the only appointment I get paid directly for is that one delivery appointment. So my care for a patient begins way before our device is ever delivered and way before anything is ever billed to insurance and we ever get paid for anything. Now $22,000 or even higher may seem pretty expensive, but there is much more included in that price than just the prosthesis. You're also paying for the time, the knowledge and expertise of the individual who's providing you the prosthesis, who has your best interest in mind and is going to do their absolute best to ensure that you have a quality product and an effective tool to meet your goals when it comes to using the prosthesis. And for our patients, that cost also helps cover the knowledge and expertise of the lovely and talented Lisa Harrison. She is our patient care coordinator who fights hard and works tirelessly to make sure that our patients are getting a quality prosthesis that they need and they are able to receive insurance approval. Okay, you guys still with me? I know it's been a lot of info. Like this video if you found it valuable. Like always, leave any questions in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe. We do have an upcoming video talking about different types of insurance, what is typically covered when it comes to prosthetics and how often, what questions should you be asking to make sure you have good coverage for prosthetics, and resources to check out if you need help in obtaining a prosthesis. I will see you guys then.